Okay, folks, this is Jake Davis with the top five video for today. I got a brand new phone, and hopefully there will no constrepticies. That's a word. <laughs> uh, over the last six weeks, I've done six of these videos, ranking down my top five picks for the top six most prestigious Oscar categories and the greatest winners of all time, at least in my humble opinion. Uh... So let's get right into it. The Academy Awards are tomorrow night on ABC live from Hollywood. So uh, now we'll get into it. My number five, and again, just my personal favorite picks of the winners. Greatest winners ever, ever for Best Picture winner. Number five, Lawrence of Arabia. Story of T.S. Lawrence, a brutal and... It's too loud. A brutal and focused uh, soldier who leads uh, an army into conquering uh, the Middle East for Europe, for England, and all the horrific things that he endures through his campaigns. It's a masterpiece. It is one of the most unique and powerful and impressive motion pictures ever made. Uh, just search up... You don't have to watch the whole movie to get a glimpse and a taste of this. Just watch the train raid. See thousands of extras charging through a city or charging through this. It is a, a magnificent motion picture. A kind of movie that has never been made before or since its existence. Number four, Casablanca. Humphrey Bogart plays Rick Blaine, who is a bar owner in Morocco, who is dealing with tr kind of entangled in uh, the war and uh, is also at the same time is reintroduced to the long lost love of his life and just torn between all these contradicting and perilous situations going wrong, going on around him. Also, it's incredibly, incredibly quotable and funny film. Number three. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. There is no best picture winner I've ever seen that had a first-time viewing immediate effect on me. I saw it at the theaters, opening day with my dad and my cousin, um, <laughs> in front of a sold-out crowd of 300 people who 100% love this film, all on the edge of their seat for the full 200 minutes of the motion picture. It was an experience. It was something else. It was something you cannot really explain. You really had to be there to feel that kind of experience of seeing a film for the first time. It was something else. It was something special. And for about a week and a half, no other movie I saw, fuck that, a month and a half, no other movie I saw had a chance. I didn't even leave an impression on me. Number two, Gone with the Wind. Scarlett O'Hara is the greatest film character in film history, and just the story of a woman, this entitled, pampered woman, who, at the same time she's just reading, ad reaching adulthood, is thrown into this forced, not just being an adult, but forced maturity, because she's expected to take care of so many people and take over... Uh, so many aspects of, of her life and protect people. And, you know, the whole the whole war and the epicness and the beauty. And if you were to calculate um, all the re-releases like they do with the modern movies, the special editions and the 3Ds and the Disney crap that they do these days, they didn't start doing that shit till 97. And they still only do that with a select few. I mean, they pick and choose this kind of bullshit. But if you were actually to take something like Gone with the Wind and look at the 85-year history of that film and every single solitary release it had, plus its original box office, and adjust that money for gold, nothing, nothing in the history of box office touches Gone with the Wind. And number one, my opinion the greatest and most deserving Best Picture winner of all time is The Godfather. It's one of my top three favorite films of all time. It is 
a vicious, violent movie about the heir of a mafia family. Un, you know, he doesn't want to take the throne, but he has to take the throne. He has to be the Godfather, and it's one of the great things in the movie. You know, it's, it, 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 whatever. Spoiler, you know. If you've seen The Godfather, you know that the title character is not Vito Corleone. It's Michael. And it's a great fucking movie. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. This greatest male character in movie history. Holy shit, those are my knuckles. God damn. Hope hope that doesn't read on camera. <laughs> shit. It's like I broke a bone. Anyhow, uh, my honorable mentions... I have just as many as I have my nominees. I'm going to float over the cuckoo's nest. A story about a man who f pretends to be insane to get out of his prison sentence just to find out he that the insane asylum is a far more dangerous and volatile uh, 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 atmosphere than prison is, mainly because of the, the fucking uh, the goddamn hen house bitch. Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> I'm bad at phrasing tonight. <laughs> I've shot this already, god damn it. I'm that's why I'm flying busting it. I'm breaking a new phone. I'm deflowering a phone here. So go with me. Platoon, the greatest battle film of all time, directed by an actual written and directed by an actual Vietnam veteran, Oliver Stone. Not his only Oscar. By the way, Unforgiven, a brilliant a uh, western about assassins uh, hunting, uh, uh, trying to cash in on whore's gold, uh, which is a, a wonderful study of American obsession of in, of violence. Schindler's List, very similar to like Gone with the Wind or The Godfather. It's hard to believe there. There's very few movies that on this level of when it came out. And in the field it was in, there's no way it wasn't going to win. This was the movie to win Best Picture that year. Nothing else had a chance. Parasite, a more recent film, the only foreign language uh, Oscar winner of all time, and only the second uh, horror movie to ever win Best Picture. Just a wonderful, wonderful, great film that switches genres halfway through. Incredibly um, awarding motion picture, not only to experience, but also to revisit. Just seeing the little, you know, knickknacks and things that uh, the director laid out there throughout the f course of the film. The worst Best Picture winners, at least least deserving, in my opinion, my opinion, just please, the whole thing is my fucking opinion. Uh, three movies, and all for this exact same reason. An American in Paris, Out of Africa, and The English Patient. Three long fucking movies with not one redeeming character or one memorable scene between the lot of them. Fuck these movies. And the snubs. Why or how were they not nominated? It needs to be explained to me. The Man Who Will Be King from 1975. Two legendary, iconic movie stars. A fucking legendary, irreplaceable, enigmatic filmmaker and and all based on a story from one of if not the greatest adventure writer of all time uh and it was also a film that was like in development hell for like 30 years and it still ended up being one of the best films of the 1970s that's fucking saying something ram akira kurosawa's japanese adaptation of uh, William Shakespeare's King Lear, an adaptation in the purest fucking phrase. It is just, it shows what an adaptation can be and what it should be. Taking something intended as this and applying the exact same concept, the exact same world, uh, exact same rules, applying it to a different world. It is truly unique and brilliant in every conceivable way and loses none of Shakespeare's epicness, poetry, or tragedy. 
is a masterwork. It truly is. The Passion of the Christ. Just pa copy and paste everything I said in my director video. I mean, the man made a film in a dead language about a religious deity with an R rating <laughs> out of his own pocket and made the one of the most unique and magnificent films in cinema history. I'm going to watch it and that's for a couple weeks too because it's his 20th anniversary coming up and it is Easter Sunday soon. Uh, the Avengers. Yes, indeed he do. Because once they brought back the 10 nominations for Best Picture thing, they had to do this. And it just pissed me off when the Avengers not only wasn't nominated for Best Picture, but they only had nine nominations that year. So fuck you. You intentionally ignored the Avengers, even though you knew it should have been nominated for Best Picture. It was a genuinely, truly ambitious motion picture. It didn't even have the top and most famous Marvel superheroes in it, but still was able to collaborate multiple films and multiple characters in this unilateral way that is so perfect and entertaining and wonderful and changed the way Hollywood has made movies to this day. Uh, and the last one is going to uh, Salt Burn. Yes, God damn it, Salt Burn. The whole thing has been a long fucking con. This is all just an elaborate way for me to once again remind you that they should have fucking nominated Salt Burn. It is late. It's like 4.30 in the morning. I'm Jake Davis, and I'll catch you on the fly. See Saltburn.